Welcome to another seven minutes with Matt. I'm your host, Matt Rogers. And as always, thank you so much for spending the next seven minutes of your life with me. Always add value or at least try to add value to your life with these seven minutes because uh, look at in today's world, it takes a lot for people to invest their time into somebody. So for you to spend it with me, I honor that. And I really, really thank you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what's the point and why did I get licensed as a minister or, or ordained as a minister? Um, I'm really happy about that. It was not a goal that I ever set out at a young age, but this past weekend, I did get my license and my credential through the Assemblies of God, which, yeah, I'm very, very proud of. I took it very seriously. Look, I always tell people, I graduated with a 1.96 GPA from high school and college. I'm a terrible student, but like for the first time in my life, I was actually interested in the content. Like, I don't give a crap about algebra uh, and a lot of different, you know, uh, geology and uh, stuff that we learned in school, but this, and I don't know if it's age to be honest with you, or I'm just at a different point in my life with God, but I really do want to know him more. And I really do want to understand the Bible more because there was a point in my life, even though I grew up in church, I didn't know how to read the Bible and it didn't really make sense to me. So but when I was 12 years old, I was at a youth camp and a guy came through, a very powerful guy, and he prophesied to me and he said, you are going to be a minister. You're going to be in the ministry. And I do want to say this. You don't need a credential, a license or an ordination to go preach the gospel. You don't need a credential or a license to go love somebody, pray with them and bring God's kingdom. Uh, so, but for me, this was a calling on my life that God would not leave me alone about. And the reason I chose the Assemblies of God, that's what I grew up in, theologically and doctrine-wise, uh, I line up with a lot of what they believe. At the end of the day, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God not just a son of God. He is also the son of man, which means he came as a man filled with God. And he did die on a cross and completely redeem us to get us back in right standing with the father. We also believe in healing miracles, signs and wonders. And cause that's what he did. So basically at the end of the day, we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And we believe it's actually possible to walk as he walked because that's what the Bible said. Um, so that's why I joined with the assemblies of God. Um, did I ever think this was going to be my destiny? No, I wanted to be famous and play football when I was a kid. And that's all I did. And that's all I wanted to do. I loved and still do love to make people laugh. Like that's, I, I just, I love laughing. I love being funny. Like y'all probably think I'm crazy, but I make myself laugh probably more than anyone. Like if you saw me in a car by myself, you probably think I have like schizophrenia or something like for real, dude, I talk to myself and I make myself laugh. I make up jokes and stuff. And when we had John Christ on our podcast, he invited me to like go do stand up and open mic. And I still might because I love doing that. But Eli and I were talking. It's like, why did you get your ordination and how are you going to apply it to your life? Well, and, and what have I learned? So the thing that I love about ministry class, and if you have any desire to chase after the Lord even more, I would highly recommend that you join a ministry school or at the very least, just take a ministry class. Because again, this is like the only thing that I was ever good at studying. I graduated with a 1.96 GPA. I was a terrible student, but I loved this. Um, was I passionate about hermeneutics and homiletics and eschatology? No, but I was interested enough to learn about it. Uh, hermeneutics and homiletics is basically how do you translate the Bible? How do you preach sermons out of the Bible to understand the Bible? And then eschatology is the study of the end times revelation, which is so fascinating to a lot of people. Um, but I, that's what I learned. I learned to be a better student and how to read this more. It became, it, it makes more sense. I mean, you can't deny the fact wh whether you, what, whatever you believe that this book, the Bible has withstood the test of time written over 2000 years ago and even old, I mean, older, like what Eli four, 5,000 years ago, if you go back to the old Testament, like thousands and thousands of years 
and it's still so relevant, if not even more relevant today than it was back then. It's it's fascinating. So that it was a passion that I went after. And how am I going to apply it to my life? Um, first of all, it gives you like anything. If you look at it just from a, a normal thing in life, like if you want to be around more people like this is a unbelievable network of like-minded people, not all of them, but a lot of like-minded people that can help you, that can sow into your life, that you can help. It's a great network, whether you it's the Assemblies of God or if you're a Baptist and you join a Baptist you know, school or whatever, I highly recommend it because at the end of the day, you're going to know God a lot more and it's going to get you into his word, which has been a staple for my life. Like, if it ain't in the word of God, I don't want it in my life. And that has, has really brought me closer to him um, because it, I don't want to use the word forces, but it forces you to get in the word and, and actually do good if you're interested about it. And, and lastly, how am I going to apply it to my life? Some of my personal icons are the Billy Grahams of the world, are the Oral Roberts of the world, um, especially Oral Roberts. And I don't know how it's going to end up, but I'm 44 years old now. I know that I know that I know that somewhere, somehow in my future, I'm going to be doing healing tent revivals, healing tent ministries. I just see myself preaching to hundreds and thousands of people and bringing the kingdom of God into people's territory and watching God. It's one of my funnest things. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen last week how my Uber driver or my Lyft driver picked me up. Single mom had a disabled or has a disabled daughter and just loved on her and reached out to my community of people. And she was a single mom grinding to take care of her daughter who had spinal bifida and I just got an unction from God, like, hey, we're going to give this lady money. And we kicked it off by giving her $500. And in 24 hours, I reached out to my Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, my Instagram story. And y'all gave her $6,500. It completely has changed her life. She's like, I'm going to move out of my parents' house. I'm going to get my own apartment, take care of my daughter. And got a chance to pray for her daughter. And it was phenomenal to watch that happen. Like that's my jam, dude. I don't need to be in a church or have a license or a credential to love people, to get into a lift, to talk about Jesus. But for me, it was a calling on my life and I know God told me to do it. And now that I have my license and I do that, it, it has opened up a world to of more opportunities. We'll say it that way. So that's why I did it. But again, do you need a license to love? No, you just got to make a decision. Do you need a credential to preach? No, you just have to open your mouth to your household, to your kids, to the person in the McDonald's drive through Go out there and love somebody. And if it's pulling on your heart to get into a ministry class or a ministry school, I highly recommend you do it. You will not regret it. Thank you so much. This has been another 7 Minutes with Matt.